Welcome to worship, Worthington Presbyterian Church. We are blessed to be together uh, to worship the risen Christ, live stream and in person. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, and it is Confirmation Sunday, when our youth profess their faith and become active members of the congregation. We rejoice with you, youth, and we want to support you in your faith and um, living that faith in any way we can. In the middle pages of your worship bulletin, you will find descriptions of interesting adult classes, an invitation to a membership seminar, which started today, and details on this coming Saturday's Habitat for Humanity wall build. Uh, we still need people who can follow directions. <laughs> so the director positions are taken. That does say something. <laughs> And we need uh, one or two people to help with children's activities. It will be a joyful celebration um, Saturday on the Village Green, and we will build the whole framing for a house for a family in need. Um, in just a few moments, I will need your help with the opening sentences. Yeah, that's coming. And now with a moment for mission, let me introduce Katie Boudros. Good morning. I'm Katie Boudros, a member of the Community Connections Committee, and our goal is to build fun and friendly connections between the church and the community. One of the ways we do this is through the Lemonade Brigade, offering free water and lemonade in front of the church during the Concerts on the Green Summer Concert Series. If you aren't familiar with Concert on the Green, it's 13 Sunday nights from May 22nd through August 14th, and great musical groups perform for free right outside of our front doors of the church. All you do is bring your chair and enjoy the music. It's a beautiful way to spend a Sunday evening. But we need your help with the Lemonade Brigade. We are looking for at least two volunteers a week to host the Lemonade Stand for a couple of hours on the Sunday or Sundays of your choice. The time commitment is roughly 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Volunteers will be asked to gather a cart that is, has most of the necessities on it in the church uh, kitchen and roll the cart of items up to the front of the church and just like an old-fashioned lemonade stand, offer free water and lemonade to the concert goers. So grab a friend and join in the fun on Sunday evenings. Sign up with more specifics. We'll be available online, but right now the best way to, um, to register is on the links in the e-blast. So if you don't like that method, you are always welcome to call the office and Jen or Elisa will be happy to get you signed up. So we appreciate your help and we know that you'll have a delightful evening at Concert on the Greens while sharing in the friendliness of our church. Thank you.
Our gospel reading this morning includes the thesis of the gospel of John, the reason the gospel writer wrote it. So I'm going to give you a heads up. You'll hear it again in the worship service. Jesus did many signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the gospels. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have eternal life in his name. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes, By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, so that none may boast. Let us come honestly before God to confess our sin and rejoice in the gift of forgiveness. Let us pray together. Merciful God, your love is boundless and your grace exceeds our imaginations. You keep finding ways to be among us, even when the doors of our hearts are locked. Graciously, you seek us out. We cannot hide, but we can confess that sin has us in its grip. It has led us from your ways and corrupted our best intentions tempting us to believe that you don't notice, that you aren't even present. Correct our vision, cleanse our hearts, create in us a place where we can welcome you and receive the fullness of the love that you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen.
hear the good news, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. may be seated and I invite the children to come come up here to the front and find a spot on the steps good morning <laughs> just come find a spot to sit down anywhere you want anywhere you want will be just fine it's good to see you today. Did you get outside yesterday? Yes. Anybody get sunburn? Well, that's pretty good. Good for you. That's great. Today is a special day in our church. And there are some signs about why it might be a special day. This is one of the signs. Do you know what we call that piece of furniture? It's the baptism font. Sometimes we say baptismal font. Either one is just fine. Do you know what's in here? Anybody water. know? Water, yep, water. Water. There's something else in here, too. You might want to take, come take, take a look. Special for today. Not always there. What do you see? Water. Yeah, they're like little stones, aren't they? Little stones. Do you? Yeah, they're, what color are they? Blue. blue, so everybody can see, little blue stone. And how many are there? Six. Okay, have a seat. <clears throat> a long time ago, probably before most of you were born, uh, six sets of parents had their child baptized. Maybe here, maybe someplace else, but baptized, because that's what we do here, right? You guys remember, happened very recently, right? The minister, we say prayers, and the minister takes water and puts water on the child's head like that and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, that person becomes like an official Christian. It's like getting your passport in the body of Christ. God loves you and you lived in the community of faith before that time, but once you get baptized, then you kind of have your passport. You got a passport? Some of you do, I bet. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that happened and, and when, the, when those babies were baptized, moms and dads made promises. They said, uh, they said, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and I promise to the best of my ability with God's help to be faithful. That's what we call professing, saying out, professing your faith. And they said those promises for themselves, but also on behalf of their son or daughter, okay? So today we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six of our young people in our church who, who, have, who, who are getting ready to make those promises for themselves, because that's the whole idea, that we, we bring you into the community of faith and help you grow and learn the stories of Jesus and what the life of faith is all about, giving God praise and learning God's story and learning how to serve in the world and help the world become what, the, what God would like the world to become. And then eventually making those promises yourself that you want to be a disciple. We call this confirmation, kind of a big long word that is the moment where these six people are going to say, yep, I agree with what mom and dad said. I, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I say it for myself now. Does that make sense? 
So that's what we're doing today, very, very special day. And there are six stones in the baptism water today because each one of these young people will take one as a, as a remembrance of their baptism and a remembrance of the day that they made the promises for themselves. So this is a, just a good day to talk about it because you're on the path there too. And everybody in this whole congregation is at your service to help you, okay? We're, we're praying for you and we're doing our best to share the best stories that we, we love the most, like the story of the prodigal son's one of my favorites, or the good Samaritan, that's another great one. Or David and Goliath, that's another great one. Learning the good stories that help us know how to be God's people in the world. So um, I'd like you, you're, this is gonna happen after the sermon and not gonna be in here, right? Yeah, so I would like to have you help me uh, say a blessing for, for these six, because you're not going to get to be in the room when we do it later in the service, okay? So would you repeat after me a prayer that is a blessing for these friends of ours, okay? Ready? Repeat after me. Loving God. Loving God. We thank you for baptism. We thank you for baptism. In baptism, you claim us. In baptism, you claim us. As your beloved children. As your beloved children. Today, six people. Today, six people. Will say how they love you. Will say how they love you. And claim you as Lord. And claim you as Lord. We pray your blessing on them. We pray your blessing on them. Help us grow in our friendship. Help us grow in our friendship. Through your love. Through your love. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you got to take part this way. Um, and now we go. Yeah, we All right. Follow me. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that we may hear what is true. And be guided by your wisdom, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Our first reading is from the Gospel of John. The reading takes place on Easter Sunday evening. I'm reading chapter 20, beginning of the 19th verse. Let us listen for God's word to us today. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the, despite the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they retain the gospel of our Lord. Thanks to be God.
Thank you. A beautiful way to continue our Easter season. Thank you. And I'm continuing the reading that Britt just began. I continue uh, John 20 at the 24th verse. We are still on Easter Sunday evening. Let us listen for the word of God. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, mm, unless I see the mark of nail and nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. <clears throat> Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing, you may have life in his name. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> this reading is a traditional reading to have on the Sunday after Easter, the story of Thomas and the disciples and uh, finding faith. And yet, as I got prepared this year, of course, I was thinking of our confirmands, the six young people who are making their confirmation promises today. And it struck me how many ways this reading really has some beautiful coincidences or resonances, however you might like to describe it, with the occasion we are celebrating today. Here's one of them. You remember that when Jesus was baptized, the scriptures say that the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And then in today's reading, we heard that the Holy Spirit is given to the disciples. Now, I don't know whether it descended or more like wafted through the breath of Jesus. And by the way, isn't it nice to think about breath as bringing a gift and not a virus? Whew. So, so there's that similarity that in Jesus' baptism, he receives the Holy Spirit. We're remembering baptism promises the day the disciples received the Holy Spirit. Confirmation is a day you confirm those promises your parents made, that they, they declaring their belief that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and their promise to be, with God's help, a faithful disciple of Jesus. Those promises are about trust, and trust is a thing that grows only as it is tried. Think about that. Here's another coincidence or resonance in this reading. In possibly the most famous FOMO in all history, Thomas missed out on seeing Jesus. The risen Jesus appeared to the disciples on Easter. He wasn't there. He was out on a pizza run or something. <laughs> And when he got there, he had a hard time believing the others. Believing in Jesus, believing in God, knowing what to believe is often not easy. And I'm going to take a guess that, there, that every person in this room, myself included, has had moments that we have either doubted or felt confused or skeptical or wondering about some aspect of Christian faith. It's part of it. Believing in Jesus, believing in God, knowing what to believe, it's a key subject for confirmation, isn't it? And there we are talking about belief in this passage. Thomas was a seeing is believing kind of guy. So is much of our world. But there is more than one way of knowing in this world. Sometimes we need to believe in order to see. Here's another coincidence or resonance. 
This is the passage, this is what Betsy referred to at the beginning. This is the passage in which John, the gospel writer, blesses all of us. Jesus shows up a week later and he shows his wounded hands and side to Thomas who now believes. And Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. I think that's us. It's certainly every confirmation class I've ever been a part of, including the one I was in as a teenager. I was kind of a late bloomer. I, w I made my confirmation in 11th grade. I mean, I mean, I could be wrong. Raise your hand if you have seen the risen Jesus. We all want to meet you. I'm only half facetious about that. I don't take it for granted. We never know. God can do anything. But most people I know and have experienced life with and Christian life with, we're in this group that John blesses through Jesus' words. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. As we navigate being Christian in a world that still opposes Christ, that still clings to values of death rather than life, where might makes right, where we're encouraged never to say we're sorry, where we're encouraged to build up walls rather than tear them down. Here are a few things to keep in mind to help us navigate our way in Christian life. First of all, there is more than one kind, one kind of knowing. There is more than one way to know things. Now, you guys know set theory, right? You know, you got these circles and those circles and they overlap or they don't overlap, right? Set theory, okay. Here comes set theory. God knows everything. There is nothing in the universe that is outside of God's set. Okay, are you with me so far? Okay. Religion has a set. Not as much as God knows, because religion is a human institution and we don't know everything. We know some things. Science knows some things. Science has a set. Science doesn't know everything, but science knows some things. The science set and the religion set overlap a little bit. I don't know, you probably argue how much they overlap. <clears throat> they do overlap, but they've got separate things too. It's two ways of knowing, and they're both important to us. So we all work together in balancing and working with it and knowing as much as we can about the world. Science helps us understand how things work. Religion helps us understand who we are as human beings and what our purpose is in life and how we're connected to the divine. Two ways of knowing. There's also more than one kind of believing. There is, you can believe that, and you can believe in. You can believe that is, relates to things and ideas and concepts. I believe that truth is essential to free society. I believe geometry is a good way to learn to think theologically. I believe the Buckeyes play great football. I believe that Billy Joel plays great piano. I believe that. With me? Okay, great. I believe in relates to people and relationships. Believing in is about the same thing as trusting. I'll bet you've heard your parents say, I believe in you. When we're baptized, it's a formal way of God saying, I believe in you. I've called you by name. You're mine. I will love you steadfastly forever. I believe in you. I believe in you is really close to I trust you. Believe, believing in and trusting in are very, very similar. And when we make our promises of faith, it's more about the believe in kind. It's about creating a relationship. And just like any relationship we have, we learn about the other person all the days of our lives. Here's the thing, though. Trust nearly always begins with not seeing, not seeing the whole way through. It's what we call a leap of faith. Raise your hand if you have raised children. They're out of the house. Okay. 
look at look at all these folks. Um, well, and keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Um, think about when you allowed your son or daughters to take the car for the first time. <laughs> keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Put your hand down if it was not an act of trust, blind trust. <laughs> See, trust, trust begins as an act of faith. You, you're going to trust that they're going to do okay, and you're praying they're doing okay, and, and if everything works out okay, then trust builds. Or maybe it doesn't work out okay, and we've got to rebuild trust a little bit. But the idea that, that you've earned it before you get it, it, it just doesn't really begin that way. There are some things in life that come into being because we've trusted them to begin with. We've trusted them into being, and that's how they grow. It's kind of like the little engine that could philosophy. Do you remember that story? You know, a little engine could, can we get up the hill? And she, you know, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. That's like giving trust. That's like giving the, the benefit of hope to begin with, trust. And that's how we get to the top. So many, This is how faith grows too, just the same way. It's also, you have some experiences beyond faith about this kind of trust that will give you the, kind of the groundwork. One of them is friendship. When we learn to trust a friend, that begins as a gift. The first time you say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust you with something about me that I've never told anybody. That's an act of faith. That's an act of trust. I believe in you that I can do this. The promise you're making today is that kind of promise. And possibly the only bigger one you may make in your life is when you get married, if you get married. Making the promise in marriage to another person is an open-ended expression of trust. I am giving myself to you and trusting you're going to take good care of me. And, and that's an act of trust and a mutual one. God's already offering this trust to you, and now you offer it back. These signs are written so that you may come to believe, and through believing you may have life. That's a sign about the growth that comes when we make the promises. I want to I want to be sure to just emphasize again that this is so much about relationship and that how we grow in faith is about relationships. So I want to finish with a story about a, a believer who was really skeptical. He was an agnostic, which means that he he wasn't sure there was a God. He was proud of being an agnostic, in fact. Um, so he was skeptical about religion, Christian religion, but he was really faithful to his wife. And his wife was a dedicated Presbyterian. So in his faithfulness to his wife, his name was Homer, in his faithfulness to his wife, he did all kinds of stuff at church. He came to church every Sunday. He got to know everybody at church. He built friendships with people who were Christians and happy to claim their Christianity. And he uh, helped his wife um, he helped his wife do all the kinds of ways she liked to serve. She was in a women's circle, and, they, and she had a couple mission projects that she worked with, and he helped her every bit of the way with all of these things, applying all of his talents. He supported her and the church with his time and his talent and his treasure, but he was not a member. Until, in his 80s, his wife had a medical emergency that ended up making her not be able to swallow anymore. She, she had injured her throat. And so for several months, she had to stay at home and be fed through her side, through a tube through her side, be nourished that way. And while everyone prayed, hoped and prayed that her swallowing would recover. Six months into this time of recovery, she had a swallow test and failed it. They waited another month, seven months. She had another swallow test. She failed it. Eight months. The Sunday before her eight-month swallow test, uh, Homer stood up in church. He was singing in the choir at that point, but still not a member. And he, uh, at that church, we had open mic time for prayers. He stood up and he said, I want everybody to pray for Lydia. On Tuesday at 1 o'clock, Lydia is going to have another swallow test, and I want you to pray that she passes the test. And uh, 
other things happened as people were sharing their prayers and the microphone worked its way back into the sanctuary a little bit and another longtime member of the church stood up and said, look, I think that all of us should set our alarms on our watches and our phones so that at one o'clock on Tuesday, we hear an alarm and we all swallow. Let's all swallow at one o'clock on Tuesday. And so they all thought that was a great idea. And what do you know, on Tuesday, Lydia swallowed and she passed her test. And not very long after that, Homer thought, I have no idea what happened in that, but I think I need to be a Christian. So he didn't get all of his answers, questions answered, ever. But he recognized in that experience with the group of believing people that there is something real and mysterious and he wants to be a part of it. That's what it means to become a Christian. We all bless you today and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, um, I would like to introduce you guys to all of our confirmands this year. Um, these past two years have been very rough on a lot of us, um, and yet these young men and women uh, have decided to pursue God, um, to, get to, uh, to get to know the God who loves them so much. Um, and I am all incredibly proud that despite everything going on in our lives and our society, that they have decided to go on this journey. Uh, these are all remarkable youth. And I really want to invite each of you in the congregation um, after the service, uh, you know, head downstairs, come to Fellowship Hall. We have a nice cake for them. Get to know these young men and women. Um, so please, after the service, come down. Resurrection, 
Jesus said to his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always till the end of the age. We continue to obey the words of our Lord, baptizing those whom he has called and confident of his promises. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. Through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, God has freed us from sin and death. Just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, so too does God raise us to new life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, full-fledged members of the church, voting, grown-up members of the church. And, and we are uh, made members of the body of Christ and nurtured to give ourselves to him in trust and love and obedience. Let us all remember with joy our baptism as our youth confirm their baptismal vows. That baptism is active, not passive. Confirmation is not something that happens to you. It's something that you do. Today, you will confirm the promises your parents made for you when you were baptized and too little to answer those promises yourself. Your parents and this congregation made promises to guide and nurture you in becoming a follower of Jesus. We're celebrating because today you're publicly proclaiming your faith and your desire to serve Jesus together with us. This is not the end of a journey. It's a wonderful milestone in a journey of faith that continues, and we will continue to love you and journey with you. Now, this is specifically to you, six of our confirmants. We rejoice that you are here to confess your faith and to share with this congregation in our common ministry. Through baptism, we enter the covenant. That's the promise, the promise that God has established. This covenant is a promise through which God gives us new life and nurtures us by the love of God and God's people. When we embrace this covenant, covenant, we choose whom we will serve. We make those promises ourselves by turning from evil, anything that opposes the power of Christ, and turning to Jesus Christ as the true power. I invite you now, when, when your name is read, I invite you to come forward and reach into the baptismal font and take one of the glass beads from the water. These beads represent to you a droplet of water and a reminder that you have been baptized and that you belong to God. On behalf of Session, I present the following for the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant. Logan James Amen. Colby John Beck. Aiden Daniel Crockett. Liam Michael Farley. Catherine Audrey Ferguson. Riley Beth Morgan Bowsher. We present each of these children of God for confirmation and commissioning. They are here to make their profession of faith, confirming the baptismal covenant into which they have already been baptized. As God embraces you within the promise and covenant of baptism, we now ask you to reject sin and faith 
and profess your faith in Jesus Christ. Pastor Tom will ask you these questions that are asked of all the faithful since the days of the early church. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, please say, I do. Who is your Lord and Savior? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I will with God's help. Today, you are publicly professing your faith. Will you devote yourselves to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers? If so, please answer, I will, with God's help. And now we ask the entire congregation representing the body of Christ, we, we renew our own vows uh, uh, with these young and young men and women. And before we say together the Apostles' Creed, a question to you. Worthington Presbyterian Church, do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Logan, Colby, Aiden, Liam, Catherine, and Riley by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to keep growing as disciples of Christ and faithful members of his church? If so, with enthusiasm, say, we do. We do. There we go. And now let us all confess our faith together using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe. Next to our confirmants, you'll see our confirmation mentors who have supported and encouraged these young men and women on their journey. Each of our mentors has a stole. This stole symbolizes a yoke, a wooden beam that connects to work animals. We are connected to Jesus, working alongside him, empowered by his strength. The red color of the stole and the white dove remind us that God has baptized you with the Holy Spirit. The stole is a reminder of God's presence with you always and your partnership in his ministry of love and peace and justice. Thank you, mentors, for now presenting the stole. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. Renew in Logan, Colby, Aiden, Liam, Catherine, and Riley, the covenant you made in their baptism. 
Continue the good work you have begun in them. Send them forth in the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, all God's people say, amen. Now, as people of faith, you are fully fledged active members, capital A, capital M, for Worthington in Worthington Presbyterian Church. But know that this membership extends beyond that. You are fully fledged members of the body of Christ. And wherever you are, seek the fellowship of believers. Seek the fellowship of the church to grow in trust and faith and enjoy the abundant life available to us in Christ. Trust in Jesus Christ. Be confident in your faith. Be courageous and strong. Seek the peace of Christ daily. Live in the grace of God always. And let all that you do be done in the spirit of God's love. And know that, with, that God will be with you always until the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. With the renewal of the baptism and your public profession of faith, we welcome you into membership here at Worthington Presbyterian Church. We have gifts for you to celebrate your start in this new journey. Let us praise God and welcome these children of God, the newest members of our faith community. Amen. You, you might know this for Eastern Orthodox Christians around the world, including in Ukraine. Today is Easter. And for the rest of us, we're continuing to celebrate and marvel at the truth and the reality of Easter. So as we prepare to come before God in prayer, I want you to repeat after me, Christos vos grace, Christos vos grace. Don't worry, there won't be a test afterwards, but this is Ukrainian for Christ is risen. So let's try it again. Christos vos grace, Christos vos grace. And so every time in the prayer I say that, let's repeat it together after, okay? Let us pray. Lord, we join our voices with the people of Ukraine. Christos vos grace, Christos vos grace. We join our voices with people all around the world who are praying right now in the midst of the darkness and death and despair of Friday's cross, praying for the peace and victory of Sunday's resurrection. Christos vos grace, Christos vos grace, Christ is risen. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, for all of your children who are grieving, all who are in danger, all who with broken hearts are wondering if evil will prevail. Help us and help leaders around the world to listen to your voice, your wisdom, your guidance. Christos vos grace, Christos vos grace. May your resurrection power make a way 
where there doesn't seem to be a way. Oh, God of mercy, hear our prayers for loved ones near and far, for Paul and Ralph and Kay in hospice care. Hold them close in your strong and loving arms. For Leslie, Norm, Jeff, Bob, and Andy, in their cancer treatments, bring healing and comfort and renewed strength, we pray. For Judy, Larry, Dave, and Don, we pray, O oh great physician, for your healing touch and your loving presence. Christos vos grace, Christos vos grace, risen Lord, hear our prayers. And now, in this brief silence, we pray for the people in our lives you call us to be praying for. In the name of the risen and the reigning Christ who taught us to pray, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward. Remembering the words of our Lord Jesus, who said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. We worship God with our tithes and offerings, grateful for every opportunity we have to share our blessings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this joyful day, and we thank you for the gift of seeing seeds bear fruit and blossom Bless these gifts, O oh God, of our time and our talents and our treasures, and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Again, we hope that you will join us downstairs in the fellowship time to greet our newest members of our congregation. And now go into the world in peace. Blessed are you who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Blessed are you who have not seen and are not quite sure what to believe. Blessed are you who have not seen because God sees you and God loves you and God claims you and God's love is of a depth that he was willing to go to the cross to give us his complete trust. We are safe, we are loved. What a wonderful place in which to grow. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.